Praise the Lord, um, believers and children of the Most High God. My name is Tom Namonio, and I'm going to share with us today about a very special topic uh, concerning David's kindness to a little man called Mephibosheth. Uh, this is found in the second book of Samuel, uh, chapter number 9. Uh, the entire chapter talks about David's kindness to uh, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was a son to one of David's very close friends called Jonathan. Jonathan was a son of the first king of Israel called Saul. Now, David knew Saul and, Sam, and, and Jonathan and therefore had a special relationship with Jonathan's son Mephibosheth. But because Mephibosheth had sort of left the royal lineage, as you know, because Saul had been deposed as king, he had fallen off grace and favor in the line of inheritance. In other words, actually, uh, uh, Saul was king, first king of Israel, and therefore Jonathan was in line of inheritance. In other words, he was a prince. And Mephibosheth should actually have been third king in line. But because of what happened in Israel, that could not happen. And because he was deposed and because he had other limitations physically, he could not uh, come in the palace of David. And because David had a special touch and, and contact with Jonathan, he asked his servants to find out if there was nobody amongst the, the household of Saul that was alive so that he could show them kindness. And this was very special because he was later told that there was a man called Mephibosheth who was crippled from birth. This man was brought before the king and one of the most interesting things that he said is, who am I in verse 8 of chapter 9 that who, who is it, who, what is it your servant that you should regard a dog like me. And this takes us back to the kindness that we need to offer people who we know and those that we do not know. But it gives us a new revelation of what it could have been before creation. God created us. He made us in his own image. We were actually princes. We were very special and honorable before him. But because of sin that entered the world, we lost that privilege. And we, like Mephibosheth, we became more or less like dead dog and we were banished from the kingdom and from the, from, from the Garden of Eden. We could not have access to that privileged position, the, the, the royal throne uh, f f that we were supposed to, to achieve. So, but God in his own plan desired <clears throat> that uh, we could rebuild that relationship with him. Mephibosheth was not desirable at all at the table of David because one, he was from a wrong lineage. This was a new order. Secondly, he was actually deformed. The Bible tells us that he was deformed from birth. Uh, he could not move and he was lame. And of course, all those things uh, make you undesirable in the presence of a, a, a highly uh, known king and his palace. He was offered kindness by David and he continued to eat at his royal table because the king, I believe, saw something that was special in his face that reflected the desire and the, the wishes that his friend Jonathan could have wished over him. He had a special relationship with Jonathan and each time Mephibosheth sat before his table, I believe he saw a reflection of his friend's features in the little boy who sat before his table. So, like Mephibosheth, we may cry unto the king of glory, who is our God. What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I am? Yet the Lord indulges us with most familiar communion and fellowship because he sees in us a resemblance, a remembrance of his dearly loved son, Jesus Christ. Many times we may be off, we have fallen off, we have deviated from his call, but each time he sees his son in us, each time he sees the remembrance of the sacrifice that his son made, he is indulged to bring us to his table. Such is the love that the father has for his only begotten son, 
that for his sake he raises his lowly Christian, you and I, who are wallowing in poverty and internal banishment to the noble rank and royal provision. We can be able to have a communion and fellowship with God at his table. Our deformity through sin and continued failure shall not rob us and shall not rob you and me of the privilege that we have to sit before the throne of grace, which has been invited to us. Although he had access to the king's table, he was treated with royalty. His disabilities and deformity may have limited him to achieve his highest potential. And just like all of us, God has met us at, at different levels of, of deformity. We were once in the world. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, God loved us and brought us into his inheritance. So like many of us, like him, we could have had many deformities, perhaps scars that we have had from previous uh, attempts of sin and previous disabilities and deformities from our lack of faith and failure to heed to his word. So these scars have a limitation. They tend to have a limitation on our fullest potential as believers to achieve the highest possible potential in our service to our God. So, for example, Mephibosheth could not have fled the city with David when he actually fled. So these limitations as believers sometimes limit us. We may not be able to follow uh, the Lord entirely through our, our life because of these limitations, just like Mephibosheth uh, failed to come along with David when he left the city. And that cost him because he lost a lot of uh, inheritance that had been uh, given to him through Saul because of those limitations. And therefore, as believers, if you have some limitations, it's important that we overlook them and delight in the grace that God has given us and his kindness. So, saints whose faith is often weak, uh, who are not established and rooted in the word, are often great, at a greater loss. We make many losses because of our lack of faith and sometimes because we are not established and rooted in the word of God. We are exposed to many enemies and sometimes we cannot follow the king wherever he desires us to go. And this sometimes arises from frequent falls. One of the reasons why uh, Mephibosheth has had this infirmity is because he actually fell when he was little and therefore he developed a crippled feet and he could not be able to, he could not move. And the other reason is sometimes we lack inadequate we have inadequate discipleship especially during our spiritual infancy. You know when we are little and we have just come to the knowledge of the Lord and we are still yearning milk and growing we have certain times failed to find proper discipleship and therefore we fail to grow and we develop these weaknesses that may never grow out uh, of us. Then often, some, often we have perpetual and willful sin uh, in many cases that brings broken bones and scars that limit our fullest potential. If Mephibosheth was humbled by David's kindness, what shall we be you and I, what shall we be in the presence of our gracious Lord? He was humbled by his kindness, and therefore we as believers should also be humbled by God's welcome to us and his, his free will of love to us. The more grace we have, the less we should think of ourselves. For grace, like light, reveals our impurity. Because God has been gracious to you and has welcomed you to have communion with him at his table, in his palace in his presence and he has made you a prince that alone should help us to be kind enough and to be humble in fact most men of god who have had an encounter with god who have had a special relationship with god are the most humble they are humbled because they understand the depth from which they were picked and they know that they did not deserve to share communion with the almighty god and by doing this they're actually humbled and they bring fruit uh, of humility. Just like in Ephesians chapter 1 and 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. We have been co-opted in the body of Christ and we are accepted and beloved. God's plan is saving us through faith in Christ. This should cause us a never-homing sense of 
uh, heartfelt thankfulness. We should be thankful each time we come before the presence of God because what he did for us was an amazing, incredible work of saving grace. The grace of God is glorious. It's not cheap. It's glorious. And Christ gave his life to secure it for us. He made a sacrifice that was made once and for all for our salvation. It is costly. The grace of God is costly because it, uh, it demands obedience in Christ. The Christ that we have believed by his grace, it demands that we should be obedient. And uh, we also need to die to ungodliness and also uh, die to worldly lust, lusts and live soberly. You know, those are the commands that we get when we have crossed over to this new life in Christ. It requires us to forsake the nets, you know, like the disciples who were called out with Christ. You need to forsake the nets with which we caught fish previously and take up his nets for discipleship as well as uh, the ability to catch men for Christ. So those are the things we need to uh, forsake and take on a new armor. Um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to share with you about David's kindness to Mephibosheth, but also as a reflection of God's kindness to us as his church and his miracle that he made once and for all for us that we should be invited to his table to receive communion and fellowship. I have talked about his faithfulness, David's faithfulness to his friend Jonathan, and that each time he sat at the table to see Mephibosheth, he saw the picture of Jonathan. And that is also a same reflection to us as believers. Each time we sit before the throne of grace at his table to dine with him in communion, he sees a reflection of Christ in us. And for those of us that have kindly received this grace of God, we should be kind enough to not to view a lot of the other people who are failing with disrepute. We should actually have kindness to to other believers who are struggling in their weakness, in their weaknesses, and help them to grow up so that they are able to exhibit the fullest potential that Christ has um, installed in their lives. Thank you very much and God bless you.